So this story has me really feeling confused, um, and I don't know how to process it, but overall, I'm glad. So Joe Manchin, for once in his life, has done something that I don't entirely disagree with. He has chosen to come out against the confirmation of Neera Tanden as director of the OMB. Now, it is for the wrong reasons. He thinks that she's too mean to Republicans, a little bit too divisive. And sure, her tweets are absolutely without question divisive. She goes after everyone, the left. She's blocked me on Twitter. And she also goes against uh, or goes after Republicans. I don't care that she goes after Republicans. Really, Neera Tanden is the embodiment of every single thing that is wrong with Washington, D.C. She's too close with special interests. As president of CAP, she took millions and millions of dollars from big tech companies, large multinational corporations. She literally advocated to steal Libya's oil, which is a war crime, by the way. She wanted cuts to Social Security. She uh, physically assaulted someone, a journalist. And on top of that, she outed a sexual harassment victim who was working at CAP. There's a plethora of reasons why she shouldn't be confirmed. Her being too mean to Republicans, that's the least of my concerns. Albeit, the fact that Joe Manchin is on the right side here, great. I wish that it were progressives in the Senate who were actually standing up to Neera Tanden. You know, maybe Bernie Sanders, Ed Markey, Jeff Merkley, even Elizabeth Warren. But nonetheless... Uh, we got Joe Manchin, so a broken clock is right twice a day. So we learned last week that Joe Manchin would not be supporting Neera Tandon's confirmation, and at that time, the question was, now, since this basically throws her confirmation into jeopardy, since Joe Biden would need at least one Republican, which is really unlikely, is he going to withdraw the nomination? And at that time, he said no, as of the 19th anyways. Oh, I, I think we're going to find the votes to get her confirmed. No. Okay, so at the time, I understand that makes sense because this is only a minor setback. You just need one Republican to cross the aisle, and perhaps Mitt Romney or Susan Collins would do just that. Except now, the Republicans who, in theory, were the most likely to cross the aisle and support Neera Tandon's confirmation have come out and said, uh, no, we are not going to support Neera Tandon's confirmation. So as Brett Samuels and Morgan Schalfun of The Hill report, Senate confirmation of Neera Tandon to lead the Office of Management and Budget appeared increasingly improbable on Monday after three key Republicans said they would oppose her. GOP Senator Susan Collins, Mitt Romney, and Rob Portman joined Senator Joe Manchin in opposing Tandon, seemingly leaving her at least one vote short for a confirmation. If Tandon falls, it would be the first time a Biden cabinet nominee was was blocked from confirmation. Given the Manchin defection, President Biden would need one Republican in the narrowly Democratic-controlled Senate to vote in favor of Tandon's confirmation. But on Monday, three of the most likely possible choices said they would not back her, citing inflammatory tweets. While the White House has publicly backed Tandon, officials are already considering backup plans. So, as of the 19th, he was saying, I have no plans to withdraw my nomination, but now we're getting reports that they see that the writing is on the wall. And uh, her confirmation is now in jeopardy. To that I say... <laughs> Good job, Joe Manchin and Mitt Romney. It feels almost sinful to have those words leave my lips. Nonetheless, if you do something that ultimately is better for America, that the left wants, I don't care who you are. I care about results, not who gets me those results. So if Joe Manchin is going to end up by accident on the right side of this issue, uh, along with Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, that's fantastic. Now, I still have to say, even though I'm happy and I want to celebrate the fact that it looks like Neera Tandon is going to go down, although we don't necessarily know for sure yet, I'm not going to lie, my soul is a little bit crushed because this should have been something that every semi-leftist in the country was in agreement on that Neera Tandon obviously is not someone who should be qualified who is qualified for any position she should not be confirmed for any government position for all of the reasons that I listed and that's not even like all of them there's many reasons as to why Neera Tandon is not qualified is terrible and will I be satisfied with the individual who Biden names to replace her almost certainly no but what we do know about Neera Tandon is more than enough to deduce that she is not someone who's going to be looking out for the people. But yet, leftists can't get it through their heads 
that this is not your friend. Bernie Sanders should have immediately stated his opposition to Neera Tandon, but yet, as CNN's Manu Raju reports, he won't actually say whether or not he'll confirm her, but he uh, is supposedly speaking with her. By now, I'm sure that that meeting already took place. But this shouldn't be like a question. Like, we shouldn't be wondering, will Bernie Sanders be against Neera Tandon? It should just go without saying. I mean, he's the individual who I think brilliantly and eloquently laid out all of the conflicts of, uh, of interest that are there. Why would you confirm someone who is so entrenched in corporate America. I mean, this is the corruption that the left is supposed to be against. So why is this so difficult? Why are there so many people on the left who are afraid to go against Joe Biden and Neera Tandon? Like, these are corporate Democrats. Corporate Democrats are bad. And when we find the worst of the worst who are auditioning for a position just because they want to advance their own careers and don't actually care about the people in this country, then we fight them. Now, even the executive director at Justice Democrats on CNN advocated for the uh, confirmation of Neera Tandon and attacked Joe Manchin when he's right for the first time, perhaps in his entire life. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's there's public record of, of those tweets, but the reality is I think that Joe Manchin is the one being divisive right now. We are in the middle of a public pandemic. Joe Biden was just elected by a huge mandate uh, by the American people. We have to deliver as Democrats and we need people in positions of power who are ready and prepared to go big in this moment and not leave anyone behind. The mentality has got to be of the Democratic Party especially, uh, but any elected official, that we have to move quickly to save as many lives as possible. Uh, and I would also point out that he had no problem voting to confirm uh, other appointments of clearly uh, partisan members uh, when it was the previous Republican administration. There should be no, I think, opposition to, to some, you know, folks that are being proposed by the Biden administration who have, you know, clearly are ready to do the work and are ready to get the job done and they feel are the best prepared to do it. What was that? I'm sorry, but Neera Tandon is not someone who is, quote, ready and prepared to go big in this moment and not leave anybody behind. You do know who Neera Tandon is. Like, I'm almost hoping that the executive director of Justice Democrats, one of the most prominent left-wing organizations, is just woefully misinformed. Because that if that's actually, like, your beliefs about Neera Tandon, one of the most corrupt elites in D.C., then we have to, like, reevaluate our positions. We have to reevaluate what we're doing. I mean, Really? And I hate, it, it is driving me nuts, how people justify their bad political beliefs by saying, oh, well, we have to do X because this is a pandemic and the situation is really serious right now. No, you're just using that as an excuse to give someone who is very unqualified for that position a pass. And on Twitter, Jen Uger tweeted out, I'm not a fan of Neera Tandon. In fact, she did some of her mean tweets about me. But unlike Republicans, I don't think we should cancel her because she once hurt someone's feelings. The hypocrisy of GOP crying over cancel culture and then trying to cancel her over her tweets is amazing. Except this isn't about mean tweets. This is about the substance, like the mean tweets and the divisiveness that is one of many reasons why she shouldn't be confirmed. Mean tweets, like sure, you could say she's divisive, she attacks the left, and she's too much of an instigator, but still, it's it's the corruption that we care about. Jenk has been one of the loudest advocates to get money out of politics. So why would you be in favor of someone like Neera Tandon? Now, he does make the case later on that, um, well, if, if it's not Neera Tandon, then it's gonna be someone way worse because Joe Biden is, is terrible. But that's not an excuse. Like, we shouldn't just say, oh, well, you know what? This person is terrible, but odds are there's going to be someone even worse for that position. I mean, we have to fight. That's all part of the process. Like, none of this is diff none of this is easy. It's always going to be difficult. That doesn't mean that we roll over and die. And I, I hate this because people on the left are becoming just accepting of whatever Joe Biden wants to do, because sure, he is better than Donald Trump. He's done a number of good things. He's handling the pandemic competently. But when it comes to actually making a difference in people's lives, you're not going to make a difference. We're not going to see an impact if he keeps nominating corrupt ghouls who just get in positions of power and further enrich themselves. Do we honestly believe that Neera Tandon, who has accepted millions of dollars 
from big tech companies and large multinational corporations is actually going to do anything to improve the lives of the American people. Sure, you know, if she fails, which that seems likely, Biden's new nominee could very well be someone equally as, if not more conservative than Neera Tandon. But the thing is that Neera Tandon, like anything that she says that is ostensibly progressive, that's all a facade. She ran the Center for American Progress. So her entire, like, political theater revolves around her convincing people that she's a progressive, but in actuality, she's not. You have to look at the evidence. When there was momentum for Medicare for All, what was she advocating for? A means-tested, private insurance-based alternative. The thwart momentum for Medicare for All. Someone who's okay with Americans dying because they don't have health insurance, that's no progressive. That's no progressive. Someone who literally advocated stealing the oil from a sovereign nation, committing a war crime, that's no progressive. And so what I just want to see is, is fight. <laughs> like, I want to see the left actually fight. I want to see Bernie Sanders unequivocally condemn near attended and without question say, no, I'm going to be working with the OMB director. I want someone who I can trust. We cannot trust near attended. Her record over the years has been nothing but destructive and divisive. So no, try again, Joe Biden, do better. I mean, if we never use our leverage, if we never actually push back against the Democratic Party establishment in a meaningful way, when we actually have leverage, when Neera Tandon needs every single vote, then we're never going to be effective. People are going to lose faith in progressives, and we can't have that happen. There's a number of progressives uh, or leftists online who are already just like disregarding Nina Turner, who hasn't even been elected yet. Like, they're already saying, well, she's just going to be as ineffectual as members of the squad, so I'm not even going to try to get her elected. Just let the corporate Democrat win. That may not be their words, but that's effectively their argument. So people like that, don't give them ammunition. Actually fight and prove that people in Congress are there for a reason, to fight. So Bernie, get it together. Fight. Elizabeth Warren, where are you at? Ed Markey, Jeff Merkley, like, what are we doing? Uh, people in organizations who are influential, Alexandra Rojas, Jen Uber, fight, don't roll over, fight. That's what I want to see. Continue to fight and to agitate and push back against the Democratic Party establishment, who is not our friends. They're not our allies. They are our enemies. And if we don't treat them as such, then we're going to be steamrolled again. And if we get steamrolled, that means that Republicans will be empowered because Democrats they don't have the answers. The left does. So we have to behave that way and fight them when they do wrong and fight folks like Neera Tandon. But thankfully, it seems as if she is going to go down. So that's really good news. But let's learn from this and actually stop letting bad people take advantage of us and, you know, further advance their own careers for narcissistic reasons. Let's actually push back for once.